Fender Original 60s Stratocaster. As you are already aware of, in the mid-1960s, to be more exact, 1965, Fender was sold to Columbia Broadcaster Systems, and this decade Fender Stratocaster and Telecaster started to have changes in design. The noticeable aspects of design change is enlarged Stratocaster headstock, which is absolutely fine, three bolt neck configuration, and most unacceptable, Telecaster body contour change in the upper part where the neck joins the body. Visually and aesthetically, the body parts from the neck and does not continue the body contour to the lower horn. But today, we're not talking about the Telecaster, but the Stratocaster. This episode will expand some details and personal thoughts on this Fender Original 60s Stratocaster. So here is a quick look at the guitar before we start talking specs. So, as you can see, the headstock has inherited the transition logo, which looks really attractive. The neck features bone nut, vintage tall frets, 9.5 inch radius, and round laminated rosewood fingerboard, which means that the rosewood was glued on top of pre made radii maple neck. So, here is the difference of how laminated rosewood fingerboard looks versus slapboard rosewood fingerboard. As you can see, the laminated rosewood fingerboard still has radius underneath it, where the slapboard rosewood fingerboard is completely flat underneath. So the guitar features pure vintage 65 grey bottom single coil Stratocaster pickups. And we've got a really conventional layout, two tones and one volume, and five-way blade switch. The color of the body is obviously Olympic white finish with mint green scratch plate. And we've got standard synchronized tremolo with bent steel saddles. At the back of the neck we've got, they call it, thick C profile, which to me feels really comfortable. Generally, the specifications do not speak to me unless I realize the guitar plays properly. So if you pick up a guitar and it is symmetrically straight, it stays in tune and basically tunes well while you're playing it, and the pickups are not weak and sound pretty well too, the guitar is absolutely fine. What makes this guitar really special is that it's coated with nitrocellulose lacquer. This is not a polar finish, as you may find on other instruments. This guitar will not stay the same over time. The finish will check in, wear, peel off, exposing wood and create that famous look of a beaten up Stratocaster. I expect this guitar to look like Stratocaster from the 1965 era. The lacquer has yellowed, so has the scratch plate, and the guitar really looks like it has been loved. For some reason, many of us tend to think the guitar is not that good if it has no signs of wear, but if it looks like it has run miles and miles of guitar tours, then it becomes immediately valuable. Partially, it is true. So my thoughts on this instrument. It is a made custom shop model, as they call it. It will age over time, and it will age the way you play it. Apart from anything else, it is a very advantageous money investment. Should you decide to sell it later, this instrument will not decrease in price. Instead, it will become more expensive, because these kind of instruments are sold very well. This guitar looks like a piece of art. It will definitely look good on a stage. This guitar will be a worthy heirloom to pass through generations. So, should you buy this guitar? Well, I don't know, but my answer is maybe. 
because it replicates the 1960s Stratocaster at a much affordable price. Maybe if you like Leica like finishes like I do and see the guitar age with you, and maybe if you like quality instruments or think better instruments will make you play better. But what I know for sure is that this guitar sounds and plays incredible. It looks like a true vintage instrument. This guitar is capable to sound the way you want it to. And lastly, this guitar will be your true body over the years. So let's hear some clean tones through the Marshall Tube Amplifier. 